Welcome, welcome to Shadow Me Tarot, where I post tons of unboxings of incredible amounts of tarot decks and oracle decks. Um, but this is a new one today, and I'm just going to rip this open for the satisfaction of ripping it open, because most of the time I use a razor blade, which is around here somewhere, but this is just plastic. It's not a box. It's not weirdly taped yet. Ooh, okay, this is kind of cool. I'm digging this. I was expecting this, um, you know, in a month from now. I didn't realize this was already released. Um, I thought it was a new release. It says, thank you. We are a small business and hope you enjoy your purchase. We strive to make our customers happy and would be honored if you left us a positive product review. Um, if for any reason you are unhappy with your buying experience, please get in touch with us before leaving a negative review. Okay. Well, they are a new business, so and you shouldn't leave negative reviews. Um, it's just that if you don't have anything nice to say, try not to say it. <laughs> Unless you absolutely have to, but anyways, be honest, that's enough. Okay, so there it says. Um, so this deck, when I purchased this, um, I thought it was releasing. Like, I wasn't expecting this to get this until the end of next month, so maybe they printed early, but I'm pretty sure this is a new release. I'm going to double check before I post it on the title as a new release, but um, this is uh, Learning Tarot Cards by Witchy Cauldron. Um, it has keywords, astrology, zodiac, chakras, and meanings. And sometimes it's just, um, I don't know, I like to see the different meanings. Sometimes, you know, um, you work with so many different decks and you start to attribute different meanings and then sometimes you're like, wait a second, what does this card mean in this deck? Um, so sometimes it's nice to go back to basics, but this one did have some unique things on it that I really liked for it as a training deck. Um, and mainly it has the Rider weight. um, you know, as a training deck, it has the Rider weight um, images, and then it has definitions, both the upright and in the reverse. So we'll just take a look at this. Um, I'm going to say right now the box is all right. The problem with this box right now, it doesn't have the finger holds to pull the bottom out. So immediately off the box, bo off the box, <laughs> off the bat. Oh, we are have, struggling getting this open. Okay, so already. Um, so here are the pretty backs of the cards. Um, the card stack isn't isn't perfect, but it's not bad. It's going to be easy to shuffle. Uh, I think. All right, so let's kind of take a look. I'm going to actually do the whole deck, the upright and the reverse, hopefully. <laughs> Um, because this might be a good way of just even just learning it if you're um, learning the tarot if you're just starting out doing that. All right, so we'll put these decks side by side. And I think what we'll do is we'll go all the way through in the upright. We'll read everything on the upright and then we'll quickly go through and reverse them um, so that you can see them in the reverse. All righty, let's see. Uh, Okay, so the thing that I thought was very, very cool about this deck um, is that it has these affirmations on the side here. I wonder if I can shine the light if it's going to be. Eh, that's not helpful. Um, let's see. Oh, you might be able to see it a little bit better. Okay, you, you really can't see it. <laughs> so I'm just going to move it up to the camera here. And I'm going to... Um, there we go. It says, it's time to embark on a brand new beginning. I'm not going to hold it up every time, but I will read this affirmation um, for every card as we kind of go through them. Um, but some of the things that you can see, of course, it has the traditional infinity O or zero. Um, it has a chakra here. <laughs> I don't know which one it is. I want to say it's the crown chakra. <laughs> That's what I want to say, but it could be the root chakra. I mean, we're starting at the beginning, um, but I'll have to look up and, and just off the bat. I don't know the chakra symbols. Um, this is a, I want to say that's Jupiter. Um, so, but I don't know these very well either. Um, so this is going to be, I'm still going to have to do a little research, but it's nice to see that the planetary stuff is on there. You're going to be able to see like the male, the female, the Mars, the Venus, um, and the different planets, but you also get to see the um, different astrological signs. So the more astrology that you learn or you pick up or you know um, as you learn, um, you know, the tarot, 
um, just the more um, depth you can get into in your readings. Um, but what I like about this is the full card says maybe, right? Anything could happen. <laughs> you could fall off that cliff or there could be like, you know, just it might just be a step down. Who knows? Um, so in this one, it says uh, for the affirmation, it is time to embark on a brand new beginning. Um, in the upper, it says innocence, freedom, originality, adventure, travel, foolishness, carelessness, idealism, youth, spontaneity, lack of commitment, new beginnings. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm not going to read um, the reverse. I'm going to do that itself. So we're going to read everything in the upright and then I'll flip the decks around and we'll do everything in the reverse. All right. So for the magician, we have creativity, action, power, manifestation, skill, magic, work, self-employment, a smooth talker, having the gift of gab, willpower, directing your will, creative visualization, manifesting your desires. Um, the color of this, come on, there we go. The color of that looks kind of like a teal blue to me. So I'm going to say this is more like throat chakra, right? When we're manifesting, we're speaking to the universe what it is that we want. So I'm only guessing on these colors, so please don't hold my feet to the fire if I get them wrong. Um, I want to say... Um, yeah, I don't know what that is either. Sorry. I know Gemini <laughs> is one of the signs that is associated with the magician. Um, but let's see what, um, his mantra is. It says, have all the resources. I have all the resources I need inner and outer. I have all the resources I need inner and outer. Okay. So that is what the um, magician affirmation is. I have all the resources I need, which is a great, what a great affirmation. You have everything that you need to make what you want, to do what you want, to create what you want, because we are creators. Okay, and this is a yes card. Uh, creativity, action, power, manifesting skill, manifestation, skill, magic, work, self-employment, a smooth talker, having the gift of gab, willpower, directing your will, creative visualization, manifesting your desires, and number two for the high priestess, she is also a yes, mystery, intuition, inner knowing, self-trust, spiritual insight, emotional stability, divination, esoteric wisdom, knowledge, things yet to be revealed, spirit guides, and hers. These are hard for me to read and it says my inner knowing is my best guide of all is what that one says. See how difficult that is to read? My inner knowing is my best guide of all. So... Um, then we move on to the Empress, number three. We've got the female sign there. You see the moon here um, on this one. Another chakra thing, kind of blue in color. I want to say third eye is what this one is um, because it is intuition and the high priestess. Um, the Empress, I want to say that this is more of the solar plexus chakra because of the color. It could also, actually, I take that back. This is the sacral chakra because she's sexy. Um, <clears throat> The Empress is a sex is sexy. She's like the ultimate feminine um, and has the ultimate feminine qualities and the ultimate in creation and motherhood and sex appeal and all of it. So, um, so I'm going to say that she's definitely a sacral chakra. We can see that this is um, the Venus symbol, I think, and also the feminine symbol. Um, she's a yes, and then she's also in Taurus. So in the upright, she is pregnancy, fertility, motherhood, sensuality, nurturing, creativity, beauty, femininity, nature, harmony, and art. And the card says, connecting to the earth reminds me that abundance is unlimited. And for the emperor, he's definitely, this is definitely the root chakra. He's a yes. He's Aries. He's from Mars. Um, stability, structure, protection, authority, control, practicality, focus, discipline, logical, practical, older man, stability, dependability, fatherhood, father figure. And he says, I am my own authority. I have the will and the power to create my own life's structure. That's a great affirmation. That's a awesome affirmation when you're studying these particular cards. If you're saying this over and over to learn this particular card, it's going to vibrate within you in a certain way when you say that. And you may find a better way of saying it for you, but uh, um, what a great way of learning the cards to have just uh, an affirmation like that, just to kind of create a feeling inside of you so that you are able to read the cards from a 
from an unseeing place, right? Not from our rational brain, but from our intu intuitive brain, from our higher self. All right. Um, so did we cover everything on there? Yes, I think we did. All right, we got number five. We've got the Hierophant. Um, this also looks like a throat chakra, right? Okay, speaking um, what our faith is, um, things that we think about, right? We bring about. Um, another Taurus, right? Yeah, another Taurus. This one's a maybe. Um, it also looks feminine like the... Um, yes, it is. Um, it is also a... Venus card, I think, <laughs> with this, or a feminine card, um, means maybe traditional institutions, traditional values, conventional conformity, marriage, commitment, religion, beliefs, knowledge, sharing, social groups, education, knowledge, beliefs. And her mantra is, I mean, this is really difficult to read and my nails are super unpainted. I'm so sorry. You have to look at that mess. I want to say if, but I can't read it. All right. So unfortunately, all right, well, I'm just going to read it this way. I choose which traditions I choose which traditions to embrace and how to do it and how I do it. So this one, so th it's kind of unfortunate. This is, a, this is a new deck. This is an indie deck. Um, it's unfortunate to see this kind of a typo because I think they really, really have something here. Um, the other problem too is this font is almost impossible to read. If it's impossible to read on camera, it's going to be impossible to read too in person too. I mean, it's, it's really, um, bad. So that's going to be my critique of this deck, but if you're meditating on it, it shouldn't be that difficult to bring this right up to your eyeballs and, and read it and, <laughs> and internalize that, that, um, affirmation. But, um, so I'm just going to read it again because it's weird. The Hierophant, I choose which traditions to embrace and how I do it. Okay. Number six, the lovers. I'm going to guess that this is the heart chakra. Oh, that looks very green to me. Green heart chakra. Um, he, this shares the same um, symbol as the magician. Let's see, magician symbol. Um, I don't know which planet that is. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm a failure. No, I'm not. I am not a failure, actually. Um, scratch that universe. Things happen easily for me all of the time. Um, so this is Gemini, um, heart chakra. It is yes or no. Um, I feel like it's a choice, uh, major choices because that's what the lovers are major choices, uh, love, soulmates, kindred spirits, perfect unions, partnerships, relationships, romance, desire, sexual connections, shared values. And it says my personal values, my personal value system Oh my gosh, this is so hard to read. My personal value system lead me to love. My personal values system lead, I think it should be leads me to love. My personal values lead me to love is how I would. So there we go. That one. I really am disappointed. That one little bit right there is, it's so unfortunate. Um, that's the only criticism so far that I have. I mean, the cardstock is not, it's, it's, it's decent. I've had worse cardstock. So for a new deck, good box. Um, but yeah, definitely a learning experience for the publisher on this one. Um, as to what works and what doesn't, I, I would definitely buy another deck from this, from this person, just because, um, I feel like this has been well thought out and having affirmations for every card. is pretty, pretty good. All right, so moving on, number seven, the chariot, and it says, um, let's see, we're cancer on this one. I want to say that this is also, I want to say that this is throat chakra also. Yeah, I definitely want to say this is throat chakra. Okay, so victory, overcoming obstacles, success, ambition, determination, willpower, 
uh, control, self-discipline, hard work, and focus. And the mantra, and it's a yes card, and the mantra for this is no obstacles will stop me now. This one is actually very readable. See that? No obstacles will stop me now. So hopefully um, it gets better as we get through the deck. Um, and this one's got a red banner, so even better. Um, so for the strength card, I want to say that this is solar plexus. Definitely looks very yellow to me. Um, uh, this is the sun. I know that one. <laughs> that astrological symbol is the sun. This is Leo. The card means yes. Inner strength. Courage, bravery, confidence, compassion, taming, control, overcoming self-doubt, focus, persuasion, influence, and our, there we go, strength begins with the choice to be kind to myself. Nice. Right? Self-control is the biggest strength. Having control of our thoughts, our minds, our bodies, our emotions, all very important aspects of our of our growth um in this soul journey all right so this is the hermit number nine uh i'm gonna put him right up with the high priestess so i'm gonna say that he is in the um, third eye chakra and look at that they do have the same little thingamajigger there um <laughs> same little chakra symbol i have no idea what this k is um this planet k um it's a virgo <laughs> the answer is no um, soul searching, spiritual enlightenment, soul searching, again, self-reflection, introspection, contemplation, inner guidance, solitude. So definitely there's some, um, there's definitely some editing issues with this. I honor my spiritual self. So very cool. That's the hermit. That's the hermit, y'all. All right. So we've got the wheel of fortune, which is a maybe. Um, and this four I know is something like Pluto <laughs> or Jupiter or something. I'm just not that well versed in the astrology aspects of this. Some of it I got it, day by day, right? You learn a little bit more every day. Um, all right. So this one I want to say is the, let's see, that does not look root to me. Um, that might be one of those other chakras. Oh, this is going to be sacral chakra sacral chakra like our empress um so and it does look kind of orange so um so it's a maybe good luck destiny change karma soulmates decisive moments cycles of life fate fortune upheaval chance and it says i ride the waves of life is the mantra i ride the waves of life and then we'll go to justice and justice is the number 11. Um, that looks like a heart chakra to me. Um, also looks feminine. Libra. Um, feminine or uh, Venus, right? Influenced by the planet Venus. Uh, justice, karmic justice, consequences, legal disputes, law, truth, honesty, integrity, cause and effect, life lessons. And his little mantra is, I get what I give. I get what I give. Interesting. Then we have, oopsies, justice. Hanged man. Number 12. Um, again, I believe it's that third eye chakra, just to confirm. Yeah, definitely third eye chakra. Um, I have no idea, but I want to say that that little thing reminds me of Poseidon. So what is that, Pisces? <laughs> or Pluto or something that is like ocean astrologically ocean related. Um, I don't think it's, I don't think it's, um, Pisces, um, cause it would have the Pisces symbol on there and it does not. Um, but yeah, water-based astrology, wherever, um, Titan, is that his name? Titan, the God of the underwater, <laughs> um, Aquaman, <laughs> That's where he comes from. Um, feeling trapped, confined, self-limiting, uncertainty, lack of direction, needing release, letting go, sacrifice, waiting, lack of direction, perspective, contemplation. And the answer on that one is no. And it's time for a sacred pause. Stillness grants perspective. And again, I, you know, this font is just 
I'm just not going to mess with it on the camera, but the font on this one with this white background is not good. Um, the spacing between the letters is not good. It makes it difficult to read the, the font on there. Um, and my biggest criticism right now is that there's some editing issues. It's probably not a big deal when you're just doing a reading. Um, but for an unboxing, it's kind of annoying. Just saying. Uh, Death card. Oh, Scorpio is a uh, heart chakra. Um, another planetary thing. And then Scorpio. The answer is no. Spiritual transformation. New beginnings. Letting go. Endings. Change. Transitions. Sudden or unexpected upheavals. Endings. Release. I'm willing to let go of a past version of myself. So very, very much transformation for me. Um, and Scorpio. Okay, then we have Temperance is Sagittarius. It has this cool little number four planetary thing going on. I want to say that it is the solar plexus that we're looking at in terms of that uh, chakra. Definitely yellow. Uh, definitely solar plexus. Um, so we're a yes, and it's balance, peace, patience, moderation, inner calm, perspective, tranquility, harmonious relationships, soulmates, serenity. And it says, I know my extremes. Now I seek peace. So that is temperance, number 14. Number 15, the devil. The answer is no. Um, it is Capricorn. It has this nifty little H with a T on it. Which I'm sure has some sort of astrolo astrological meaning that I don't know what it is. Um, the devil, the mantra is I am not a puppet. Um, the upright uh, means addiction, depression, mental health, issues, secrecy, obsession, cheating, dependency, bondage, materialism, sexuality, powerlessness, hopelessness, abuse, violence, assault. Um, again, uh, the font visibility on this is weak. It's just weak. Um, like, I was very excited to get this deck. There's a lot of really great things on it, but the font is kind of... <laughs> it's ruining it, at least for me. I'm sure with better light and... Because the way I'm reading this with all these lights around me is not as easy with the shine. Um... So it says obsession, cheating, dependency, bondage, materialism, sexuality, powerlessness, hopelessness, abuse, violence, and assault. And I also, my own personal meaning for the devil is um, ego. All right, 22 minutes in, I need to pick up the pace here. <laughs> Number 16, the tower, Sagittarius. No, wait, that's not Sagittarius. That is male. <laughs> that is not Sagittarius. That is male. Um, Mars? Maybe. I know that's just male. Um, the chakra looks like the crown chakra to me. Just because of its pinkish color. Um, the answer for that one is no. Chaos, destruction, sudden upheaval, trauma, unexpected changes, disaster, loss, tragedy, revelations, confusion, pain, divorce, abuse, violence, bankruptcy, natural disasters. And it says, I surrender to the storm is your mantra for that one. Then we go to the star, number 17, which is Aquarius and this cool, funky symbol that is also on the Fool. <laughs> um, it looks like they have the same chakra, which I believe is the um, crown chakra. Wait a second. Third eye crown. Yeah. Crown chakra. So I do, I believe this, that is the crown chakra. Um, the star means hope, inspiration, creativity, calm, contentment, renewal, serenity, spirituality, healing, positivity, faith, renewal, again, renewal, like there's duplications in this and that's uh, annoying as well, healing and rejuvenation. Um, the star means exactly that too, like a famous person, right? Um, it, it means fame. So to me... Um, it, the star can also mean recognition, right? It definitely means hope all of the time means hope, but depending on where it is in a reading, sometimes it can mean like recognition, like you're being recognized for a job well done. Um, if you have it next to a, like a page or something like that, you might be like, I'm getting a message of being recognized <laughs> or a hope message. I don't know. Um, it says the universe shows me that I can have faith in my dreams. Um, yeah. I'm I'm 
I'm really disappointed because of the editing. Otherwise, I think it's a good deck. I think it's a great idea. It has good stuff on it, but... Um, but I still, you know, sans the, some, some of the duplicates and the font, um, in terms of like a good training deck, I think that this is a pretty good training deck so far. Um, because these are the things that people want to know. They want to know yes or no answers. They want to know which ast astrological signs it's associated with. If you're into astrology, this is a great, um, or if you want to add more astrology into your readings, this is a great way to start adding that kind of stuff. But you're going to need other resources. Because um, symbols without a book don't really tell you anything. Um, but this is useful. And I think the mantras are useful because when you use those mantras, when you're meditating with each of the cards, um, it's just going to attach a meaning for you. Um, you're going to get visualizations and that meaning will just kind of grow and grow. So the universe shows me that I can have faith in my dreams is the star. Um, the moon is a no. Um, that is a sign. <laughs> I don't want to say that's a Pisces sign. Uh, and then that's an astrological sign. I believe that that one is probably third eye as well. Um, it says intuition, illusions, dreams, vagueness, instability, deception, anxiety, fear, misconceptions, subconscious insecurity. Um, to me, it also means shadow. Um, but we might have some of those meanings in the reverse. Um, the moon mantra is the path may not be clear, but my intuition lights the way one step at a time. Ooh, I like that. I like that a lot like you know adding points and taking away points we've got like 150 points for this deck because we have upright and reverse meaning so um i'm only going to take away a few points for the for the editing and the font um because overall i still think it's a very worthwhile deck um okay moving on oh i wanted to say which one of those was it is pisces the moon is pisces all right, now we've got the sun, which is a yes. And we have the sun symbol, um, which is also the solar plexus symbol here. And it means positivity, freedom, fun, success, optimism, vitality, joy, confidence, self-expression, good luck, enthusiasm, happiness, truth, openness, pregnancy. And the affirmation for number 19, the sun is, I shine my light on the world around me and my radiance attracts more success. I like it. Number 20 um, is yes, it is judgment. It is not affiliated with a particular sign. Uh, judgment, self-evaluation, awakening, renewal, composure, decisiveness, homesickness, snap judgments, apportioning blame, forgiveness. And then the mantra for it. Oh, this is, uh, I believe that's, I want to say that's crown chakra. It is, it's crown chakra. Um, I'm definitely going to learn the chakras just using this deck just because I keep having to check. I'm like, um, so I'm going to know these symbols. Just, I'm just going to know these symbols, like the back of my hand using this deck. Um, so let's see what it says. The daily choices I make now align me with the, with my life's purpose. Um, the affirmations are good. They could be better, but the affirmations are good. It's a good affirmation. Um, the daily choices I make now align with my life's purpose. So, which is true, right? The, the things you put into motion today will, you know, are the seeds of tomorrow, basically. Um, so that's a yes card. All right, let's move on. This is the root chakra for the world card. Um, it has that funky H with a T. I would um, probably look that up because I don't know what it is. Um, it says, yes. Uh, the world is success, achievement, accomplishment, travel, completion, fulfillment, sense of belonging, and wholeness. And the mantra is, what I've been working for is already done. What I've been working for is already done. Okay. The world. Number 21. Okay, so now we go on to the ace of... All right, so the Ace of Cups, um, the main word is outpouring. So this is new from the other cards. Instead of having a main number up here like they have for like the numerology, it looks like numerology kind of numbers, right? Even though they're already numbered. Um, right here it has an outpouring, right? <clears throat> so this is, represents uh, 
Pisces, Scorpio, Cancer, the answer is yes. It's the crown chakra. It says new beginnings, new relationships, new romance, new love, happiness, joy, conception, fertility, pregnancy, celebrations, socializing. Um, all aces are new. Just You can just start with the word new when you see an ace. Because <laughs> um, they're all going to be something new. Um, and then the mantra oh there's no mantra for this one so they only do mantras for the um higher arcana um what i do like though is that they've got um a one word thing so when you have like a one word if i've got a whole bunch of cards out here right and i'm looking at these different pictures and i've got one word to string for each picture um to kind of string together a story these do help i'm just gonna say it they, they really do kind of help because in some ways you're giving spirit an option of like spelling it out for you and if this is a deck that i pick up when i'm doing a reading then spirit really wants to spell it out for me. <laughs> Sometimes I really, I'll probably pick up this deck when uh, I really need it spelled out for me because <laughs> I'm going to need that, that, that word, but this is nice. Outpouring is a, is a great, um, is a great way of describing this particular, this particular Ace of Cups or the Ace of Cups. Um, number two, love, soulmates, union, that kind of thing. Uh, looks like Divine Feminine. This is a Cancer card. It's a yes. It's also Third Eye Chakra. It says partnership, unity, love, compatibility, happy couples, potential, soulmates, relationships, harmony, balance, equality, attraction, connection, proposals, engagements, and marriage. And then number th uh, the Three of Cups is friendship. Um, it is also Third Eye Chakra. Um, I'm surprised it isn't the... Um, I'm surprised it's not the heart chakra and it isn't it's the third eye chakra um but it, this is cancer it's a yes it's reunion celebrations parties socializing gatherings indulgences festivals festivities gatherings happiness wedding engagement party graduation baby shower happy times and that one is friendship. Okay, so then this one is apathy. This is a common, um, actually a common one word. Um, this is very much a common one word um, description for this card. Um, it's the word that I normally go to when I really have no idea what the Four of Cups is telling me. Um, in this particular one, it looks like the heart chakra. Is that the heart chakra? Nope, that's the throat chakra. Um, basically, you're not commanding the universe. <laughs> Um, for this particular card, but, uh, this is a cancer card. It's also, um, it's related to the moon. Um, uh, the answer is yes. And then it says regret, refusing offers, missed opportunities, stagnation, apathy, disillusion, uh, focusing on the negative, self-absorption, self-absorption, depression, boredom, nostalgia, and remorse. So wishing things were different, I feel like, um, all right, then we'll move on to number five of cups, which is loss. Um, again, super common meaning for this. Um, it looks like it's the divine masculine. It's a Scorpio card. The answer is no. Sadness, loss, grief, despair, abandonment, guilt, remorse, regret, trauma, bereavement, mourning, heartbreak, unwelcome change, emotional instability, focusing on loss. Yeah, definitely a good training deck for sure. Um, the six of cups returning to one's roots. I always think of this as a nostalgia card, um, like trying to recover an old feeling, your happiest time as memory as a kid, kind of how I think of it. Um, but children, childhood memories, past influences, yearning, homesickness, nostalgia, reunions, playfulness, youthfulness, innocence, creativity, kindness, goodwill, simplicity. Um, so that is a Heart card or heart chakra, sun, Scorpio, and a yes. And then this one is dream. See, here's these font things are killing me. Okay, look, you've got three different types of fonts for similar colored cards here. One is gray, one is black and white. I mean, it's kind of driving me crazy. Um, I know I'm going to use this deck. I'm just like... <laughs> um, I'll probably even buy the next deck that they, that they make because I do like, I do think this is a, a useful deck. All right. So we'll go to dreams here. This is solar plexus chakra. Um, 
Divine Feminine, Scorpio, no. And it says lots of options, choices, multiple possibilities, opportunities, uh, picking and choosing, decisions, procrastination, dreaming, fantasy, illusion, wishful thinking, imagination, hallucinations. And then we move on to moving on the Eight of Cups, um, solar plexus chakra, uh, funky H, astrological H, <laughs> Pisces, no. Abandonment, abandoning plans, walking away, letting go, traveling, escapism, reaching limits, self-analysis, self-discovery, introspection, looking deeper, withdrawal, disappointment. Then we move on to fulfillment, which is the sacral. Um, and this is funky four, ast astrological funky four, Pisces. <laughs> Uh, answer is yes. Wishes coming true, realizing dreams, happiness, cheerfulness, joy, fulfillment, positivity, optimism, satisfaction, success, abundance, prosperity, achievements, rewards, confidence. All right. So nine of cups. Um, it says fulfillment is the key word. It is the sacral chakra. Um, I did find out what this is. It is the, uh, it is Jupiter. Um, is that symbol, that astrological symbol. Um, I have another beginner deck that actually does this, but it has no pictures. Um, this particular beginner deck here I found on um, Etsy. And what I don't like about it, it's got great information. What I don't like about it is it doesn't have, um, it doesn't have the right or right picture that it talks about, <laughs> which makes no sense to me. So I almost wish like they had this here, like in this format with this information with the writer weight picture on the back side and just have no back on the card. I feel like that would probably be the best <laughs> solution. Um, but <clears throat> this has still got, what's new about this is on this one, it has the affirmations for the major arcana, which I think is really cool. And um, it also has the chakra association, which I think is very cool. Um, and I think that's important for me because um, that this deck has come to me because I'm going to be working with, um, more health kind of stuff. Um, and so I have gotten this new body tarot. So I'm really getting, getting into the associations of the bodies and the different body, um, energy centers. So for me to have this as a cue to know which, um, chakra I'm working with in the cards is going to be very useful, um, in my readings. Um, so overall, I'm still, um, very, um, impressed with the deck. Um, and I like the deck and I think, um, it has good energy. But there's definitely some things that I think when she publishes again or makes a second run um, that she should absolutely um, fix. Um, all right, so now we have fulfillment, wishes coming true, realizing dreams, happiness, cheerfulness, joy, fulfillment, positivity, optimism, satisfaction, success, abundance, prosperity, achievement, rewards, confidence. And uh, Jupiter, Pisces, and yes. <clears throat> Ooh. Ten of Cups, the Marriage card, Root Chakra. And that one is the Divine. Um, gosh, I'm really, really horrible. So this is Mars, is what this is. It's also masculine. Men are from Mars, women are from Venus. Um, but this is um, masculine energy, Mars energy, and um, Pisces, yes, um, is that one and marriage are the main things for that card. And then we'll move on to uh, the page of cups, which is also the root chakra. Um, it uses, uh, it has the moon or it's influenced by the moon. It is influenced by Pisces. It's a yes. It means child, inner child, youthfulness, idealism, sensitivity, dreamer, inner voice, spirituality, psychic messages, happy news, naivety, crush, or admirer. All right, moving on to oh, the Knight of Cups. He is creative expression. Oh, Page of Cups, intuition, right? Okay, yeah. Um, so the Knight of Cups is creative expression. He is the heart chakra. He's bringing his cup of love. He's the romantic guy. Um, he aligns with the moon. He is Scorpio. He is yes. He is romantic proposals, offers, invitations, Taking action, following your heart, chivalry, gentlemanly behavior, being swept off your feet, charm, attraction, dating, affection, warmth, gentle. And that's heart chakra. Then we've got queen of cups who is nurturing. She has the third eye chakra. She is 
This is Neptune. That uh, Poseidon forky thing is Neptune. <laughs> and then we have Libra. Uh, it is, yes, it's a mature emotional female, security, femininity, loving, warmth, sensitive, or sensitivity, kindness, happiness, intuition, romance, loyal, faithful, shy, easily wounded, pretty, beauty, daydreamer, psychic. And she's under nurturing. So then we've got the King of Cups, who is emotional intelligence. He is also Neptune. He is Pisces. He is a yes. Um, he's mature, compassionate male, calm, caring, friendly, sympathetic, wise, tolerant, diplomatic, balanced, affectionate, romantic, charming, devoted, family-oriented, generous. And he's third eye chakra. Then we've got the outpouring, um, I believe is the um, crown chakra. It is Sagittarius, Leo, and Aries. It's a yes. New beginnings. See, every wand is a new. <laughs> new beginnings, good news, physically starting something, uh, creative spark, new initiative, finding new passion, enthusiasm, urgency, accepting a challenge, potential, talent, and growth. Um, and that one, again, is an outpouring. It's the exact same definition, outpouring, as the Ace of Cups that we saw here um, for the Ace of Cups. Same thing, outpouring and crown chakra. Um, I don't know how I feel about that. <clears throat> Not sure how I feel about that. Um, I suppose in a general, I don't know. I don't like outpouring at all. I think it's the wrong word for the Ace of Wands. Uh, passion. <laughs> passion sounds right for, for Ace of Wands to me. Inspiration. That sounds right. Willpower. Those things sound correct. Outpouring. There's nothing pouring. I feel like this is a editing issue. Um, that's my first yeah, definitely feels like an editing issue. Um, choice is what the two is. All twos to me are some sort of a choice. So any choice is a good maybe card. Um, we have uh, Mars, Aries. It looks like this is the throat chakra that it is associated with. Wait, hold on. Throat or third eye? Throat or third eye? I can't remember. Oh, that would be third eye. My apologies. So, um, so third eye chakra is um, the choice card um, for the two of wands. It's a maybe. It's Aries. It's two paths, decisions, options, planning. Grass is always greener on the other side. Emigration, suddenly leaving. Uh, deciding to stay or go. Waiting, anticipation, restlessness, detachment. And then we move on to the Three of Wands, which is a sun card. It is also the third eye. Um, it is Aries. It is yes. It is travel, moving abroad, foreign land, foresight, forward planning, moving forward, self-confidence, self-belief, freedom, success, happy with choices, outcome, hard work, paying off. And we move on to the Four of Wands, which is... <sighs> the uh it's venus or i want to see what the chakra is first what is that chakra i think it's the heart chakra uh, it might be a throat chakra hold the phone let's take a look see i think it's the throat chakra i definitely think it's the throat chakra <clears throat> Um, so I feel like, okay, so this is community. It's throat chakra. It is Venus. It is, um, Aries. It's a yes. 
Happy families, reunion, coming home, celebrations, surprises, parties, weddings, events, feeling welcome, community or family coming together, community spirit, teamwork, success. And then we have the, number, the five of wands, which is conflict. It is also throat chakra. Oh, it has a funky H. <laughs> Let me get the definition of that funky H. It is also a Leo card. Come on, where's the funky H? Where's the funky H? We're going to learn these together. Um... <clears throat> wrong funky H. All right. The funky, funky H with the T means Saturn. <clears throat> I can't continue to look at it. Not know what it is. It's driving me crazy. Um, all right. So uh, funky H is Saturn. Um, it is also the throat chakra. And it means conflict, fighting, arguments, rows. I think rows as in like having a row with somebody. I don't know anybody who says that in this country. <laughs> um, anyways, disagreements. How about beef? <laughs> in America, we have beef. We don't have arguments. We don't have rows. We have beef. Um, disagreements, struggle, opposition, battle, uh, battles, aggression, temper, clashing, personalities, egos, um, strikes, chaos, unruliness, being defensive, territorial. Um these are relatively good. These are, these are good definitions. I'm, I'm not going to argue. I mean, I think this is, um, it's using red cards for fire, which is, um, the wands. So overall, I think it's a, it's a useful deck, a useful deck. My God, I do that a lot. I really don't mean to. <laughs> um, recognition is the six of wands. Um, it is <clears throat> Jupiter. That funky four is Jupiter in astrology signs. Uh, then we have Leo. Is that Leo? All these symbols are going to make my mind explode. Okay. So this is funky four Jupiter, loopy Leo. <laughs> in terms of the, the uh, whatchamacallit, sign, sign things to remember it, right? Now you've got yes. Um, for the six of wands, it means success, victory, winning, having the advantage, triumph, Achievement, praise, acclaim, awards, recognition, applause, goodwill, fame, celebrity, fans, well-wishers, supporters, crowds. Um, so it says recognition, and this is heart chakra. Then we move into the solar plexus chakra and standing your ground. Um, I always think of this as a leadership card personally, um, or rising above the competition kind of card. Um, so the seven of wands is Mars, Leo, yes, standing up for your beliefs, fighting uh, your corner, pr protective, defensive, determined, challenging, opposing, stamina, holding your own, taking the high road, maintaining control, territorial. Um, those are all good definitions for the seven of wands. The eight of wands, travel, news, um, solar plexus chakra, This is Mercury. So the feminine card, which is Venus, the planet right before it is Mercury. So that's how I'm going to remember it is the funky feminine is Mercury. <laughs> um, it's Sagittarius. It's a yes. Uh, hastiness, speed, progress, movement, action, rushing, exciting times, travel, freedom, holiday, holiday romance, taking off, gaining momentum, gaining momentum, ahead, thinking on your feet, sudden action. And I always, always, always think of um, the Eight of Wands. As soon as I see it, the first word that comes into my mind is movement, action, moving, coming at you fast, right? If you think of like a stick you throw through the air, it's going to like take to gravity pretty quickly. So <laughs> when I see a whole bunch of wands coming at you and they haven't hit the ground yet, something's going to come quickly. That's how I interpret the Eight of Wands. And it has hastiness um, and speed, but I don't know. Hopefully that helps somebody. All right. Yeah, but <clears throat> coming quickly, travel news. Yeah, okay. Yeah, they're all. these are all good um, definitions. So now we have our Nine of Wands, the Wounded 
Warrior, um, which in this deck means resilience. It is using the shape, uh, it is the sacral chakra. It is ruled by the moon and Sagittarius. It is a yes card. Ongoing battle, batter, we battle weary, fatigue, drained of energy, nearly there, close to success, courage, persistence, perseverance, backbone, learning from past failure, gather your strength. And um, we've got Ten of Wands, Burden. That's a very, that's like the consensus for this particular card is Burden. Um, it is the Root Chakra. It is ruled by that funky H, which is Saturn. I think, pretty sure it's Saturn, if I remember correctly. It is ruled by Sagittarius. It's a yes, overburdened, overloaded. Responsibilities, stress, problems, weight on shoulders, duty, drudgery, obligation, saddled, restricted, burnout, uphill, struggle, taken for granted. Then we go to the Page of Wands, who is enthusiasm, um, root chakra, Saturn again, Sag Sagittarius, it's a yes, good news, swift news, letters, phone calls, word of mouth, Fresh, cheerful, childlike, fun, playful, active, optimistic, full of energy, bright ideas, new, exciting plans, creativity, lovable, rogue. I always think of Page of Wands as precocious child. You know, like curiosity killed the cat, like got to get into everything kind of child. <laughs> Asks a lot of questions. Zest and passion for life. Excited to try everything. Um, adventurous. All right, and then here we go. Uh, the Knight of Wands is Passion. He is the Heart Chakra. And he is um, Mars and Sagittarius and a yes. Uh, being hasty, adventurous, energetic, charming, warm, exciting, fearless, confident, self-assured hero. Rebellious, brave, revolutionary, open-minded, free-spirited, sexy, warm, shameless flirt. And then we go to Vibrancy, which is the Queen of Wands, and she is in the third eye. She's ruled by the moon. She is Leo. She is a yes. She is energetic, vivacious, strong, courageous, passionate, funny, independent, confident, optimistic, outgoing, assertive, sexy, chaotic, hot-tempered, forgetful, efficient. Okay. Okay. <laughs> And then we have the King of Wands, who is Vision. He is the third eye chakra. So visionary is what I would attribute to the King of Wands. Um, he is the Sun, uh, Aries. He's a yes. Energetic, experienced, optimistic, confident, strong, friendly, funny, charming, way with words, fearless, free thinking, uh, motivated, action oriented, proud, passionate, and honest. And we move on to the Ace of Swords, which is the Crown's Chakra. It, it is Libra, Aquarius, and Gemini, and they are yes. Um, it says new ideas, new plans, intellectual ability, victory, success, mental clarity, clear thinking, breakthroughs, ability to concentrate, communication, really realizing the truth, vision, force, focus. And then we move on to the Two of Swords. This is a decision. It is the Third Eye Chakra. Um, it is ruled by the moon. It is ruled by Libra. It's a maybe. Stalemate. Truce. Sitting on the fence. Crossroads. Difficult decisions. Painful choices. Stress. Decisions. Opposition. Facing your fears. Okay. Had to take a second there. Um, so this one is the Two of Swords decision. It is ruled by the moon. Libra. It is the third eye chakra. It's a maybe. It's a stalemate, truce, sitting on the fence, crossroads, difficult decisions, painful choices, stressful decisions, opposition, facing your fears, being torn between two relationships, divided loyalty. The next one is the three of hearts, which is the third eye chakra. It's pain. Um, it is Saturn. It is Libra. It is a no. Heartbreak, betrayal, loneliness, removal, absence, division, depression, separation, sadness, heartache, unhappiness, upheaval, grief, sorrow, upset, disorder, confusion, alienation. Then we have rest is the four of swords. 
Um, it is the throat chakra, throat chakra. Uh, it is Jupiter, um, Libra, no. It represents fear, anxiety, stress, feeling overwhelmed, mental overload, needing solitude, relaxation, rest, peace, and quiet, sanctuary, meditation, regrouping, and repercussion. Oh, and recuperation, excuse me, not repercussion, re recuperation. Then we go to the Five of Swords, which is defeat. It is the throat chakra also. Yes, it is. It is um, Venus, Aquarius, no, uh, defeat, surrender, change, walking away, self-sacrifice, self-sabotaging behavior, underhanded behavior, deception, lack of communication, aggression, bullying, intimidation. And we go to the Six of Swords, which is transition. It is the heart chakra. It is Mercury, Aquarius. It's a maybe. Calmer waters, healing, progress, moving on, moving forward, things calming down, calm after the storm, overcoming hardship, relief, stability, escaping, running away, and journeys. Seven of Swords, making a break for it. Solar Plexus, ruled by the moon. Um, Aquarius, it's a maybe. Um, deceit, lies, trickery, treat, cheating, theft, underhanded, scheming, dangerous, risky behavior, enemy, masquerading as a friend, spying, lack of conscious, strate uh, strategy, resourceful. All right, and then we go. Isolation is the Eight of Swords, is also the solar plexus. Um, being that this, well... I'm going to say this is a low self-esteem if it's solar plexus chakra, right? And you're in isolation, but really she's trapped by her thoughts. I know I'm just supposed to be reading the card, but if each one of these swords is her trapping herself in her own thoughts, each one of those swords is a thought and she's trapped by her own thoughts. Um, to me, that sounds like low self-esteem and negative self-talk, but that's just me. Um, so solar isolation, solar plexus chakra, Jupiter, Gemini, it's a no. Feeling trapped, restricted, backed into a corner, hands tied, victimized, paralyzed by fear, terror, anxiety. Feeling pressure, hopeless, helpless, powerless, silence, silenced in crises. And anytime, um, let's say this person doesn't know that much about cards. Let's say they're just using kind of general generic meanings. Maybe they developed this deck in order to learn the tarot themselves. Um, when you place different symbols on tarot decks and you're using different tarot decks throughout, right? For example, like the solar plexus chakra, people are going to start attributing new meanings. You know, like for me now this, this card, no matter what, whenever I see it, I'm going to immediately think of low self-esteem just because all those swords represent thoughts to me. And everybody comes up with their own things, but that is how these symbols on this card changed the meaning slightly for me from just this regular Rider Waite deck. I need to paint my nails. I'm so sorry, you guys. Oh, okay, I will do that. <laughs> it's distracting me. All right, moving on. So this was uh, Jupiter and Gemini and a no. And then this is the Nine of Swords, which is anxiety. That's pretty much the universal one. Um, it is the Sacral Chakra. It is Mar or Mars. <laughs> it is Gemini. It's a no. It means fear, anxiety, terror, negativity, deep unhappiness, stress, burden, overwhelmed, at a breaking point, inability to cope or face life, mental anguish, guilt, regret, remorse. Um... Then we go to 10. It says endings or defeat. I've heard some, um, I've heard some very kind tarot readers, um, call this card a new beginning because there is nothing left to do in the past. It's dead. It's gone. It's defeated. Um, so yes, this is an ending card. It's the root chakra. Um, interesting that is ruled by the sun, right? Um, you have to move past whatever this is in order to go find some happiness. Um, but it is ruled by the sun. It is ruled by Gemini. It is a no. Backstabbing, betrayal, enemies, bitching, that's bad mouthing, bitterness, doormat, failure, ruin, collapse, breakdown, exhaustion, inability to cope, curses, and rock bottom. So <clears throat> I really do feel like this deck was probably born out of someone else's own learning which is probably how all decks are born on some level. 
Um, so I find this, like I said, this is a useful deck. It's definitely a useful deck. There's some, there's some things and problems with it, but they're minor, and I think it's a good, useful beginner deck. I think one of the most important things you can do as a tarot reader is learn these Rider weight cards, like the back of your hand. <laughs> Because if you can picture those when you're looking at other tarot decks that have different art, like, like this, do you know what I'm saying? Like, that is like no death card you've ever seen. Or a two of cups, like, what do you do with, with that? Do you know what I'm saying? Like, there's these faces there. Where I think there's water flowing, but you, you change the interpretation. Um, so it's, I don't know, it's just really important to memorize <laughs> that one I'm in my opinion um, the Rider weight deck because it applies to every deck that you use thereafter you can also um, learn the uh, Toth tarot the Alexander Crowley I think it's Alexander Crowley um, Toth tarot deck because um, you can basically use his cards to interpret the Rider weight deck too but it's two different schools of thought so they're gonna be slightly different in, in how they're read um, but what, whatever meaning your brain attaches to um, is how spirit is going to tell you or, or speak to you is through your own truth, right? <clears throat> okay, so moving on. Um, the Page of Swords. She's curious. She's root chakra. She's ruled by the sun. She's a Gemini. She's a no. Delayed news, patience needed, ideas, inspiration, planning, vigilance, protective, guarded, fairness, think before you speak, don't get drawn into arguments, mental agility. Then we have the Knight of Swords, Mental Activity. He's Heart Chakra. He's Mars, Aquarius. He's also a No. Big Changes, Opportunities, Seize the Moment, Jump In, Arrival, Departure, Assertive, Direct, Honest, Quick Wit, Talkative, Impatient, Impulsive, Intellectual, Daring, and Rebellious. Now we have the Queen of Swords. She is astute. She's ruled by the Third Eye Chakra. She is uh, another, I think that's Uranus. Um, I think that symbol is Uranus. I shouldn't be saying it. it. I hate that. Uranus, is that better? Uranus, Uranus is too funny. So Uranus and Aquarius, and this is a yes card. Uh, the Queen of Swords, she is honest, truthful, candid, protective, independent, chatty, communicative, witty, funny, principled, fair, uh, constructive criticism, strong, quirky, realistic, objective, and discerning. And then we go to our King of Swords. Um, this says he's a Libra, but I always think of him as a Gemini. Um, I always think of him as a Gemini. Um, but really, the swords represent all three signs, Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius. Um, but in this particular deck, because it's on the card, I would probably lean towards the astrological signs that are actually printed on the cards. Um, more so than, you know, the other signs that it's associated with. Um, that's why just, you know, just the tiniest little change on a card can change um, change the entire meaning for somebody who's looking at it. Um, so he is third eye chakra, he's Uranus, he's Libra, he's a yes. He represents structure, routine, intelligent, rational, logical, power, authority, strength, manners, conversation, discerning, detached, cool, honesty, integrity, ethics, morals, clinical, stern. Ace of Pentacles. Oh my goodness. Okay, so this says potential for abundance. It is in the, what is that, third? Oh, yeah, this is the crown chakra. We know this. And it's uh, Capricorn, Taurus, and Virgo. It is a yes card. Financial, new beginning, right? New beginning. Every ace is a new. It's new. But this is a financial new beginning. New financial opportunities, new job, new business, um, money, investment, uh, savings, prosperity, security, stability, abundance, manifestation. I also get this card often, just for me, my readings. Um, this is the world card. Um, like this card, the Ace of Pentacles and the world card, um, for me, are almost the I, identical in nature, right? Because the world card 
it's like you end and complete something, you have capital, and now you're going to reinvest that capital into something new. So <clears throat> you have all the abundance of the world card going into the Ace of Pentacles, in my opinion. Anyways, take that for what it is. If it resonates for you, great. If it doesn't, you know, forget it. <laughs> Just throw it to the side. All right. Um, so security, stability, stability, abundance, manifestation. And then we move to uh, the two of pentacles. It also works with the third eye. It means balance. It's ruled by Jupiter and Capricorn. It's maybe. It says balance, trying to find balance, resourcefulness, ups and downs, adaptability, flexibility, juggling life, juggling money, balancing books, transferring money, profit and loss. Um, so, you know, managing your resources essentially is how I, balancing your resources. Teamwork, three of pentacles, third eye chakra, Masculine energy, so Mars, uh, Capricorn, and then it's a yes card, apprenticeship, learning, studying, growing, hard work, commitment, building on success, collaboration, teamwork, determination, goals, dedication, quality, attention to detail. Me personally, the Three of Pentacles is a teamwork and collaboration card the second I look at it. Now that doesn't mean it'll stay that way, but my very first inspiration when I look at a three of pentacles is collaboration teamwork. And then I see how it fits into my story. And then if I have to, I break out the thesaurus in my head and <laughs> tell the story. Um, but teamwork working together, those were kind of, um, that's a common theme for, for most readers, um, of the, for the three of pentacles um moving on to the four of pentacles budgeting holding on to uh people or possessions or issues deep-seated past issues hoarding stinginess control possessiveness financial stability financial security and i always um kind of look at this as like kind of collecting or saving up man managing your resources right um you, you're holding on to them. Sometimes it can be like Scrooge, like kind of like miserly. Um, but for the most part, I see this as kind of like trying to be careful with your money so that you are saving up for something. Um, it's typically how I kind of read that card. Um, maybe you have the money, but you're choosing not to spend it on frivolous things because you're wanting to get something more important. Um, the five of pentacles is pretty much always a poverty card. Um, it's walking away from, from help or um, moving towards a different opportunity is another way of kind of um, like in between jobs kind of thing but moving towards different opportunity but this card this is a throat chakra it is um, mercury it is Taurus it's no temporary financial hardship negative change in circumstances feeling left out in the cold financial loss recession feeling the world is against you adversity and struggle Six of Pentacles, charity, giving. I always look at this as a giving and receiving card. This is a heart chakra card. It is ruled by intuition or the moon. And Taurus, it's a yes card. Gifts, generosity, charity, donations, money, community, assistance, support, employment, sharing, kindness, wealth, prosperity, power, authority, control, investors. Um, and I would... <clears throat> add to that it's a giving and receiving card because in the picture someone is giving and two people are receiving um and there's a fairness to it as well um so like if i was seeing this in a relationship reading card i'd be like there's fairness in this relationship you're both equally giving and and, and sharing right giving and receiving so anyways that's how my take on that and then we go on to the seven of pentacles i always look at this guy as like planting seeds and you know like you kind of put in a potato in the ground and it grows a whole bunch of potatoes and you get to pull out one potato at a time if you want to <laughs> um those kinds of things that's kind of so i look at this as planting your seeds and waiting for them to grow um here it says making investments right you kind of put a little few dollars away here and hope it grows into something more it is it rules the solar plexus yes the solar plexus chakra um, 
It's ruled by Saturn, Taurus. It's a yes card. Things coming to fruition. Hard work, paying off, harvest, rewards, profits, results, payouts, manifestation of ideas or goals, inheritance, cultivation, growing, gestation, nurturing. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, to me, this is planting the seeds. I don't think it's fruition as much. Um, as like maybe the nine of pentacles, which we'll see in a couple of cards here, that's definitely reaping and the rewards of, of your efforts. This is like, to me, this is like, okay, I've made a profit. Now I'm going to reinvest those profits in order to, I'm going to take just what I need. And then I'm going to reinvest those pro profits to make even, you know, to plant even more seeds. That's kind of how I look at the seven of pentacles. The eight of pentacles mastery here. It says patience. And everybody's going to have slightly different um, meanings on this. I don't want to, um, I don't necessarily think that this would be a new job because this is saying new job, but let's just read it. We'll just do um, solar plexus, um, sun, Virgo. It's yes. I look at this as a mastery card in the sense that you, you're in a trade. You are mastering your craft or you have mastered your craft. Um, you're efficient at it. You've got lots of notches on your belt and, and awards and things that you've already kind of completed to get to this point. So to say this is a new job to me, unless it's next to an ace, it would not be a new job. Um, but self-employment, sure. Building a business, yes. Trade, yes. Reputation, yes. Craftsmanship, uh, yes. Quality, master, expertise, hard work, commitment, dedication, concentration, success. Um, I definitely feel like this is more um, about mastery of a of a trade you are already invested in. I don't think it's a new job unless it's next to an ace. And then it's a new job in an industry you've already been in. That's my opinion. Um, so this overall one is patience here. I don't know that I like patience as the overall. Um, there are better patience cards in the in the in the deck but it is a waiting deck i mean you do have to do put in the time and you do have to put in the work and in, in order to you know get the mastery that you're looking for all right let me go to the nine of pentacles she is the most abundant person in the deck she's independent she's successful she's financially stable secure she's like her best self that's who the nine of pentacles is she is the boss. She is owned up. She has taken full responsibility for her own life. She is bossed up. She is master at her own life. She's in the sacral chakra. She is uh, from Venus. She's feminine. <laughs> she's Virgo and she's a yes. Um, but it says uh, independent success, financial stability, security, profit, prosperity, wealth, property, abundance, rewards through hard work, collecting on investments, thriving business status. Um, then we have the Ten of Pentacles, which is culmination. It is the root chakra. It is Mercury, Virgo, a yes. Unexpected financial windfall, lump sum, will, uh, will deed, trust funds, inheritance, solid foundations, privilege, inherited issues, and ancestry. So this is culmination. Um, and I almost feel like culmination is actually a really good word for this. Because if you think that, if I think of like each of the different paths of wands or cups or um, if we think of like wands or cups or um, swords and then we get to in terms of the kings, right? And I'm just going to pull up the kings really quick here. Um, so the King of Wands, he's a visionary, right? He's he's the mas master of vision, of creating, of finding inspiration. And then um, the King of Swords, he's a very logical guy. He's super smart. Um, and he seeks the truth in everything. And then you've got um, the King of Cups. Where are you, King of Cups? How did I lose the King of Cups? So the King of Cups is like emotionally intelligent, right? He's compassionate. Um, so, you know, the King of Cups, right? He is um, a visionary. He is compassionate. 
He is smart and can see the truth. And then he's also abundant and wealthy. And I feel like that accumulation of things, right? Those accumulation of successes of those um, and completion of those different paths leads to this type of culmination of abundance, right? Where you're more the most rounded person that you can be. Um, so that's just kind of something to kind of consider. But this is very much an abundance card. Um, and it can mean like old, old family money is kind of how I look at it, but it's a wealthier family, more established family. Um, almost always, <laughs> almost always 10, 10 of pentacles is you're living in your abundance. Um, okay. And then we move on to the page of pentacles, which is root chakra. It is mercury, Virgo, and yes, uh, the Page of Pentacles gives us good news in earthly matters, solid beginnings. Earthly matters meaning like anything physical, money, pigs, cows, um, milk, <laughs> cheese, egg, breath, like everything that we need to survive in, in the physical world. Anything that we utilize as a tool in the physical world to propel us in the physical world is earthly matters, right? So it's resources. It's all of our resources, whatever we have at our disposal to manifest and make things. Um, so good news in earthly matters, solid beginnings, setting goals, developing a plan, laying the foundations, taking advantage of opportunities, jumping in, consistency, excellent prospects. Um, the page of pentacles is very much a student. It's usually a younger person who's extremely studious and very detail oriented in the, in the way that, you know, they dot every I and cross every T and they get really upset. They're very perfectionist even, you know what I mean? For the page of pentacles. So the one thing I would say that this deck is missing that would give it a lot more strength is if it had better descriptions of, of the people, um, the people, this is kind of an ambitious person, right? Um, this is a person who is great with money. Um, so some of the, the character, um, the characteristics of these kind of personalities, um, I think they could have done much more, um, with this because the people are probably the hardest one to learn. And I can't say that I have found a favorite deck that really goes over, um, the people, <laughs> the different attributes of the people. If you think of like 16 personalities, um, every one of the people in the deck um, is supposed to represent um, one of the 16 personalities. Just saying. So it would be nice if they had, um, they should, somebody, maybe I'll do it, needs to come out with a trainer deck um, that really focuses um, and emphasizes and puts a lot of um, information onto the people cards because the court cards are the hardest to learn because they have both the message and then the archetype or the personality type. Okay, moving on. Um, we'll go to the Knight of Pentacles, our manager guy. He is the, he is routine. That's an excellent description, uh, for the Knight of Pentacles. He's ruled by the heart chakra. He is also, oh, is that Saturn or Uranus? I can't remember. No, this is Saturn. This is Saturn. Um, it's ruled by Saturn and Capricorn. It's a yes. And it's, um, patient, practical, loyal, responsible, persistent, protective, defensive, conservative, stubborn, ambitious, hard worker, profit, finishing what you start. <clears throat> He's very diligent. Kind of like his younger sibling. <laughs> uh, then we've got the queen of pentacles. She is in touch with her third eye. She is abundant. Pentacles court cards are all about abundant people. She is like the ultimate mother, ultimate in compassion, ultimate in, in creativity, ultimate in um, truth and clarity and fairness. Um, and she's warm like the Empress, right? She's like, she's like a step down from Empress. I don't know that I can really say, yeah, she's a step down from Empress, like all the Queens, but she's so much, she has so many more attributes to Empress than maybe some of the other um, attributes of the other Queens. And she is, um, so she's third eye chakra ruled by Uranus Virgo. She's a yes. She's mature, grounded female, businesswoman, high social status, social butterfly, bo social butterfly, uh, generous, loyal, prosperity, success, financially independent, wealth, and luxury. Then we go to the king of pentacles and he is security. He is the king maker. 
um, the King of Pentacles. He is the ultimate. He has all the attributes of all of the other kings and is on his way to being an emperor. Um, but he is a king maker. Um, he is the guy who has the opportunities. Um, he is ruled by he, the third eye, Jupiter, Taurus. He's a yes. He's mature, grounded male, successful, wealthy businessman, bettering yourself, not a risk taper, not a risk taker, empire, thriving, high status, stability, security, enterprising, and provider. So when it says empire here, that's why he's able to make kings, right? He thinks of a business, starts, he's the ultimate visionary, right? He just has to think of a business and poof, he's got the mental acuity and the resourcefulness to bring the people in to create a new king to take over that idea, right? I mean, that's the kingmaker. He is, that's why he has an empire. All right, so let's flip these cards around and see what the reversed aspect of these, because the reverse aspect of these cards is um, just as important. Um, I mean, it depends on the kind of readings that you're doing. Um, it is fine. Whoa. Oh, there we go. Um, it is fine to um, never read the reversals, but there are some there are some stuff there that is worth looking at. So we're going to go through these as quickly as possible because um, I've already taken up so much of your time. So the fool is recklessness, fearlessness, risk. The magician is in the reverse. These are all reversed. Uh, the magician is manipulation, cunning, trickery, wasted talent, illusion, deception. The high priestess is manipulation, cunning, trickery, wasted talent, illusion, deception. This feels like another, damn it, another editing problem here. I mean, they accidentally put the exact same reverse I don't like that. That's upsetting to me. So I might reach out to them and just let them know that there's some there's some big editing errors here. Um, it bothers me that they both have the same exact reverse meaning. Okay. Um, oops. There we go. There we go. All right. So the Empress in reverse is insecurity, infertility, lack of confidence, lack of growth, overbearing tendencies, disharmony, negligence. Emperor, abuse of power, rigidity, stubbornness, lack of discipline, lack of control, absentee father, paternity issues. The Hierophant in the reverse, challenging tradition, unconventional lifestyles, unconventional relationships, reverse roles, nonconformity. The Lovers in reverse, or six, is disharmony, trust issues, imbalance, conflict, disconnection, lack of accountability. The chariot is seven, forcefulness, lack of direction, lack of self-control, powerlessness, aggression, coercion. Strength, eight, is vulnerability, self-doubt, weakness, low self-esteem, lack of confidence, feeling inadequate. The hermit, um, in the reverse, is loneliness, paranoia, isolation, being, uh, it says bring reclusive instead of being reclusive. Uh, withdrawal, antisocial, restrictive. In the reverse, the Wheel of Fortune says bad luck, upheaval, disorder, external forces, lack of control, disruption, unwelcome change, delays, setbacks. Eleven is justice. In the reverse is injustice, karmic retribution, dishonesty, corruption, lack of accountability, dishonesty, unfairness, karmic avoidance. The hanged man. Discontentment, apathy, disinterested, or disinterest, stagnation, impulsiveness, negative patterns, detachment. Thirteen is the death card. In the reverse is inability to move forward, fear of beginnings, repeating negative patterns, resisting change, and dependency. Fourteen, temperance in the reverse is imbalance, self-indulgence, excess, clashing, lack of perspective, discord, antagonism, recklessness. Fifteen, the devil in reverse is imbalance, self-indulgence, excess, clashing, lack of perspective, discord, antagonism, recklessness. The tower in reverse, number sixteen, resisting change, averting disaster, avoiding tragedy, delaying the inevitable, avoiding loss. The star in the reverse, number seventeen, hopelessness, despair, focusing on the negative, lack of faith, lack of inspiration, lack of creativity, boredom, monotony. 
18 in the reverse, the moon releasing fear, unveiling secrets, subsiding anxiety, truth, regaining, regaining composure, self-deception. The sun, <clears throat> um, number 19, lack of enthusiasm in the reverse is lack of enthusiasm, sadness, unrealistic expectations, ego, conceitedness, oppression, miscarriage, stillbirth. Judgment in the reverse, number 20, indecisiveness, self-doubt, malicious gossip, lack of self-awareness, unwillingness to learn karmic lessons. 21 in the reverse, lack of success, stagnation, lack of achievement, disappointment, burden, lack of completion. Then we've got the Ace of Cups in the reverse, is sadness, pain, unrequited love, blocked or repressed emotions, infertility, miscarriage. Uh, two in, of cups in the reverse is disharmony, disconnection, imbalance, inequ inequality, incompatibility, unhappy couples. Uh, three of cups in the reverse is overindulgence, gossipy, bitchiness, lack of social life. Um, four of cups, seizing opportunities, letting go of regret, end of stagnation, motivation, enthusiasm. Five of Cups in the reverse is moving forward, moving on, accepting help, healing, forgiveness, rejoining the world. Six of Cups in the reverse is letting go of the past, focusing on the future, maturity, growing up, leaving home. Seven of Cups in the reverse is reality, clarity, sobriety, poor choices, lack of choice, opportunity, or options. The Eight of Cups is... In the reverse is fear of moving on, stagnation, monotony, accepting your lot. The nine of cups in the reverse is shattered dreams, nightmares, unhappiness, devastation, misery, lack of fulfillment. Um, the ten of cups in reverse is unhappy home, family life, dysfunctional family, broken home. The Page of Cups in the reverse is childhood issues, sexual abuse, bad news, broken dreams. The Knight of Cups in reverse is unrequited love, heartbreaker, manipulator, one night stand, cheating. Uh, the Queen of Cups in the reverse is emotional immaturity, insecurity, lack of trust, lacking direction. The King of Cups in the reverse is emotionally immature, male, overly emotional, overwhelmed, or anxious. The Ace of Wands in the reverse is hesitant, missed opportunities, wasted talent, potential, and infertility. The Two of Wands in the reverse is fear of change, indecisiveness, restricted options. Three of Wands, returning travels, moving home, lack of foresight, planning. Four of Wands in the reverse is unhappy families, postponed, canceled, reunion, leaving home. The Five of Wands in the reverse is compromise, end of conflict, row or struggle, reaching agreements. Um, the Six of Wands is in reverse is failure, losing, disadvantage, disgrace, being hunted, ill will. Uh, the Seven of Wands, folding on your beliefs, giving up, admitting defeat. The Eight of Wands in the reverse is returning from travel or holidays, restrictions, bad timing, losing momentum. Um, me, it would just be a slowdown because Eight of Wands is moving either direction, up or down, it's moving. I'm just going to kind of comparing this here a little bit. <clears throat> then we have the nine of wands in the reverse, uh, refusing to compromise, give in, stubborn, rigid, obstinate, last one standing. And then we have um, uh, the 10 of wands in the reverse is insurmountable problems, flogging, a dead horse, duty bound, resigned to fate. Then we have the Page of Wands, which is hasty, gullible, 
impatient, lack of energy, ideas, creativity, ambition, goals, plans. The Nine of Wands. Um, arrogant, reckless, hyperactive, daredevil, overly confident, loud, show off. The Queen of Wands in the reverse is pushy, demanding, overbearing, self-righteous, busybody, and a bully. The King of Wands in the reverse is rude, boorish, forceful, bully, dictator, tyrant, impulsive, abusive, and nasty. The Ace of Swords in the reverse is lack of ideas, intellectual inability, failure, hostility, the Two of Swords is indecision, delays, postponement, seeing the truth, lies, be, lies being exposed. Uh, three of Swords in the reverse is releasing pain, overcoming depression, optimism, forgiveness. The Four of Swords in the reverse is finding mental strength, awakening, rejoining the world, coming out um, of isolation. Oh. Then we go to the Five of Swords, which is peaceful resolution, uh, moving on, compromise, communication, ending conflict. Then in the Six of Swords, we have trouble coming, uh, trouble coming out of out of the frying pan and into the fire, lack of progress. We have the Seven of Swords, Confessing, Coming Clean, Turning Over a New Leaf, Conscious Kicking In. Um, the Eight of Swords in the reverse is Escape, Freedom, Release, Finding Solutions, Options, Relief, Taking Control. Um, the Nine of Swords in the reverse is light at the end of the tunnel, recovering, improving, letting go of negativity and stress. The Ten of Swords in the reverse is escaping ruin, pulling yourself together, learning from past hardships. The Page of Swords in reverse is bad, disappointing news, lack of ideas or planning, defensive, and a player. Okay, the Knight of Swords in the reverse is missed opportunities, out of your depth, out of your control, left behind, rude, tactless, and hurtful. The Queen of Swords in the reverse is overly critical, pessimistic, lack of empathy, rude, malicious gossip. The King of Swords in the reverse is lack of structure, routine, intelligence used in a bad way, irrational, illogical. Ace of Pentacles in the reverse is lack of money, poor financial control, lack of opportunities, or lost opportunities. The Two of Pentacles in the reverse is lacking balance, lack of organization, poor financial decisions. The Three of Pentacles in the reverse is apprenticeship, learning, studying, growing, hard work, commitment. Four of Pentacles in the reverse is shedding the old, letting go of people, possessions, or issues, generosity. The Five of Pentacles is improvement in finances, luck, end of hardship, positive change. Um, the Six of Pentacles in the reverse is gifts it's the same they just literally it is not the same all right so i'm going to just say up front right now like most of the reversed meanings i agree with most of them um but a, a few of them i just don't i just don't agree with them um this is one of them <clears throat> so gifts generosity charity donations money community assistance and support which is like literally what it says on the other side of it. So it's like this is saying that this is a giving and receiving card or a charity card um, in, a, in a great extent or a lesser extent, right? But for me, this card in the reverse means that these are gifts, right? Um, but they're gifts with intention of power and domination. They have strings attached. Um, that's it. <laughs> that's it. They're not true gifts. They've got strings attached to them. 
um, or there's an imbalance in that giving and the receiving. That's kind of how I look at it. But these are, they have this as nearly identical meaning. And that might be that way for that particular reader. But the fact that there's duplications in um, the editing of the cards themselves is troublesome. So I would say that it's an incomplete deck. It's a great that they went to publish, but hopefully they learn from this publication and do better next time because there's definitely some editing errors and editing problems and reading errors and font issues, um, even though they have a really good idea here. Um, you know, it's... I'm on the fence with this. I'm, I'm going like, I want to use it, but the fact that some of the meanings are so bad or off base on just a few cards makes me not like the deck as much. Um, and that's just me being truthful. Okay, so six of pentacles in the reverse. Then we go to seven of pentacles in the, the reverse is bad business, financial management, not finishing what you started. That feels right. Um, <clears throat> like the eight of pentacles, that doesn't feel like a the right some of the meaning on that doesn't feel 100% on there for me either there's nothing new about an eight of pentacles you're eight cards into the deck <laughs> there's nowhere close to new new is around one <laughs> um so that kind of bothers me okay so here we go um the eight of pentacles in reverse is repetitive or boring job uh see failure I mean, this is ridiculous. Look at this. Failure, E-Y-C-A-M-S. Failure ICAMS? I mean, that doesn't make any freaking sense. Um, so it says, I don't know. It's poorly, poorly edited. This is, like, I'm getting kind of mad at this point. It, there's too many mistakes in the deck. At this point, like, oh, I don't know. You'll have to let me know if it resonates for you, if it's something that you would be able to work with, but um, I don't know. I'm on the fence with this deck. So in this one, it says repetitive or boring job. I'm going to just like skip that second line because it makes no sense. It says overspending, debt, laziness, underqualified. The Nine of Pentacles in reverse, it says lack of independence, stability, security, reckless spending. Then we have unexpected changes, financial disaster, bankruptcy, huge losses. Um, I agree with that one actually for this ten of, or ten of Pentacles here. And in the Page of Pentacles, it says bad news and earthly matters, lack of goals, lack of common sense, irresponsible. Okay. Um, Knight of Pentacles in the reverse, impatient, lazy, apathy, lack of common sense, unstable, unskilled, unreliable, disloyal. I'll go with that too. That's fine. Um, the Queen of Pentacles. Um, <clears throat> this says she's ungrounded, overly ambitious, social climber, mean-spirited, shallow, sociopath, and jealous. I would say that that's probably accurate. If you've got a toxic Queen of Pentacles, she's probably all of those things. Um, and then we've got the King of Pentacles, ungrounded male, unsuccessful businessman, corruption, and extortion. Um, all right. So let me know what you think about this deck. I feel like this is, I, I feel like, I think this is a good training deck without a doubt. I think it's a good, it's a good training deck. Um, it'll get the job done. It'll definitely teach you what you need to know. And for me in using this deck, I know I'm just going to move out here just a little bit. There we go. I know if I'm using this deck, I, um, I'm going to learn, you know, the chakras a little bit better, right? I'm going to learn the planetary alignments a little bit. I did today. I learned the planetary um, symbols a lot better just doing this video. Um, but I really am, I'm, I'm perturbed. I'm annoyed. I'm annoyed at the, um, I have to look and see. I don't know if this is an expensive deck or not. I, th I want to say it's closer to like 30 bucks. Um, but let's see how well it's done is. Um, I hope they didn't print a whole bunch of these. I hope they get the feedback. I hope they watch this video and get the feedback and make the, the appropriate edits. Because I think overall this is a good deck. They've got a good idea. Um, there's a few things that I would do differently. There's a few um, definitions I'd do differently. But it's not my deck, right? I mean, it's not, it's not my pet project. Um, but for what they have, I think it's, it is really good. I do, I do think that there's some really good things here. 
Um, I also kind of feel like there's some serious editing. Bad. Disappointing, actually. It shuffles really nice. The cards manage and handle really, really well. Let's see. They're doing that weird clicking thing that I get in some of these decks. It's just a new deck, which is why. Um, it actually has a pretty thick cardstock. Um, and like I said, very easy to shuffle. Um, I think it is a good quality um, training deck, but I'm like, yeah, the edits really bother me. To have, I don't know, to have two cards with the same exact meaning, like it's just been like, I don't know. Mistakes happen, but. Get somebody else to read the cards, too. All right, so we popped out the Queen of Cups. You saw how easily that, that kind of... Um, um, so these are cups that are popping out. Ooh. Yeah, I mean, these they are flying right out. Without a doubt, they're definitely, like, flying, flying out. Um, so yeah, I, the cards on six. I mean, there's a, so many great things about this deck. I'm getting a little hung up on the fact that it has some icky meanings, but I think the takeaways, um, the affirmations are a good start. I think as you get further into your study, um, the affirmations are a good start. You can build better affirmations as you get further into your study. So anyways, that's my take on this new deck called, um, I got this on Amazon. It's just learning tarot cards by um, learning tarot cards by Witchy Cauldron. So this is the Witchy Cauldron learning um, tarot cards or beginning uh, beginner tarot. Um, it's on Amazon. It was newly released today. Uh, today is like April twenty seventh. There we go. Um, and it was just delivered today. Um, so it's it's actually a number one new release on Amazon. Um, and, and it does. It has some good qualities. The cardstock is good. Um, but there's some mistakes. There's definitely some mistakes. So not having the finger holes in order to separate the boxes. That's a mistake. Um, having duplicate meanings on, you know, cards that are right next to each other. That's a big mistake. Um, so I really hope that they come out with another one. I hope that they kind of fix some of these edits. Um, it's just whether or not you can kind of live with the edit. So let me know what you thought of the deck. I, overall, I'm going to give it like, oh, the edits really bother me. I'm like, I want to give it like a B minus because of the edits. Otherwise, I would give this deck an A. Um, if it wasn't for those edit, editing issues and some of this, um, the font issues, I would give it an A, but I'm going to give it a B minus. Um, anyway. If you liked this video, please like, subscribe, and share. Let me know what you thought um, and what you think. But it's a relatively cheap deck. $22, $22 isn't bad. And if you get um, like a Sharpie marker, because this is a cheap, I mean, this that's a pretty cheap deck. Um, you can write on this and kind of, you know, make it whatever you want. Particularly if you put it on the back. It's got a darker, darker backside, so you can use a white marker and, and kind of put in the meanings that maybe you want there or should be there. But... I, I, I do think it's a good training deck. It's better than some others that I've had and the editing. The, I hope they fix it. <laughs> Anyways, um, please like, subscribe, and share if you like this video. If there's anything in particular that resonated for you, please um, let me know that as well. Um, I hope you enjoyed and have a beautiful, blessed day.